I'm super excited because Curve Basher 1.2 is released and it has a lot of new features. So if you're interested, there's a download link below. A quick rundown of what's included. We have a new wire generator tool, which is way more awesome than it sounds. We also have scale randomization supported for all types. The array types specifically got a lot of improvements as well. We have a new expandable UI, performance improvements, and more. So let's go back to the cool stuff. How do we use the wire generator? If you press Shift A and go to Curve, you'll see a new option all the way at the bottom that says Wire Generator. But if we click on it, it throws an error. So the way it works is it creates curves that flow from one primitive to another. And since we only have one object here, it's not going to work. So let's move this cube over here, press Shift D, and create another one. So select them both and run the operator again. So now we're getting this result. So it's kind of working, but they don't really look like wires, do they? So two might be the minimum, but I would recommend at least three because three is going to allow for curvature. So I made three primitives, run it again, and there we go, completely different results. So I would recommend at least three, but you can use as many as you want. So let's get up close here. If we press F9, we can get the operator properties, which are fairly self-explanatory. Let's just change this to 10. We can also change the scale and the randomness, but those are kind of redundant since we also have them inside the modal. If you get a pattern you don't like, that's what the seed is for. We can also make it select all of the wires for us. So let's actually swap these out for something that looks more interesting. So J to run the modal, 2 to switch to the array types, and let's scale these up. A for the auto smooth, and there we have it. Super easy to do. And these volumes I remained, they were used for creating the control points for the curves, but we can also do this. So select the middle volume, for instance, and pull it down. And notice how the wires, or in this case, the chains are still hooked to that volume. So we can move it however we like. We can transform it, or we can scale it to get this kind of result. I love it. WireGen does have some limitations, particularly regarding the flow. So if I duplicate this cube, and then I duplicate it and move it all the way to the bottom, and I try to control the flow with my selection, this is going to happen. So it's not really what we were expecting. And that's because Blender doesn't really support any practical way of storing our selections. So the way we control the flow with WireGen is with creation order. So uh, our first point, then all of our middle points, and then our final point. So just be mindful of the order in which you make your objects because that is what determines the flow. WireGen also supports objects that seemingly have no volume, like these planes. So I'll select all of these, run it. And I should probably just change the default wire count to 10 because I always change it. So our planes, even though they don't have any volume, they do have bounding boxes, and that is what the generator is using to spawn the control points. So in the case of our sphere, I could have replaced this with a donut or a pyramid or any other object. As long as it has a bounding box, WireGen will work. Even some objects such as lights or uh, meshes with only one vertex will work because they do have bounding boxes. So my work of art is complete. I'd say this jumble of wires is basically my Mona Lisa, but it's missing one more thing. All of the wires have the exact same radius, and I kind of want to randomize them a little bit. Normally, I would do that with the properties of the generator. I'd press F9. However, because I moved this cube, whenever I press F9, I'm now getting the properties for the move action instead. I lost access to the generator properties. However, we can still randomize these wires using the mode. So select all of them, press J, and set your minimum scale first by simply moving the mouse, then hold down Alt and scale upwards. And that's how easy it is to set up randomization. So let's run the model again, reset, because I want to show you one more thing. Let's say we don't like the seed we were given when we press Alt. You can combine Alt with Shift, and now when we move the mouse, it's going to randomize the seed. So that's another way of getting a completely different result. And if we got a little bit of intersection, we can just move these manually. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, one more thing. Even though randomization is supported for all kit bash types, not just these simple ones, 
it doesn't actually transfer from one to the other. So if I set up my random radius first, and then I decide, you know what, I want to use the chains instead. So I press two to switch to the chain preset. Notice how they all reset. So that's what I mean. One doesn't transfer to the other. I would need to press alt and then redo my randomization again. So some of the improvements I mentioned before, let's talk about the expandable menu. So if I run the modal and I press F1, we see some of the other hotkeys that we can press. For instance, we have our auto smooth. Let's move up closer here. Let's select this one. So A for auto smooth. And we also have our wireframe. And outline is very useful when you have tons of cables like this, because it can be a little bit hard to see what's going on. So if you press Z, you can now toggle the outline on and off. And of course, you can if you're still looking at the modal, it also says you can reset all of our transforms and the keys you can press for randomization. So that's essentially the same thing we have here in the end panel, pair of basher, key maps. The reason for the expandable venue is because it's just more accessible. It's easier to look at the modal right here than it is to open up this little Well, that's pretty much it. In fact, there's some key maps that show up right here in the end panel that don't show in the modal yet. I'm kind of still deciding how much stuff I want to cram here in the modal UI because it's expandable, so I can always collapse it. I've mentioned this before in previous videos about Curve Basher, but just remember that you don't actually need to click on the curve to run Curve Basher. If you apply Kit Bash, you can select the Kit Bash itself, press J to run the modal, and also, let's say you do want to access the curve because you want to change its position and it's a little bit hard to get to because of the kit bash. Again, select the kit bash, run the modal, press tab, and that will switch to the curve and select all the curve points for you. So even though you can't really see it, it's very easy to reach. Another improvement, if we add, let's say, some kit bash here and we want to make it larger. So in previous versions, we would reach the end of the screen and then it would get stuck. So we need to apply it, move our mouse backwards and then run the modal again and then keep scaling. So that is no longer necessary in 1.2. We can just keep scaling beyond the screen and the mouse will automatically wrap around to the other side. So you can keep going without ever leaving the modal. Very quickly, let's add a new curve with the draw curve tool we added in 1.1. So this is actually built into Blender. We just made it more accessible by putting it in the Shift A menu. Anyway, let's add a new curve. Let's go with this one. Let's rotate it and make it look all nice. So array types are very, very hard to code. You don't even know. They're the bane of my existence. But we can finally scale them without having to press Alt. We can also reset them with zero or reset only the scale with Alt S like we can with all of the other types. Canceling the operator with right click works as well. So they're very close in functionality to the other curves, but there might still be a few bugs. We also got a performance boost, but if I'm being honest, it was a bug fix. I had some spaghetti code there and it was slowing things down so much. So I was stress testing it with a hundred curves using the chain preset and the timer is in minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So on the old system, it just took forever. On the new one, it just takes like a couple of seconds. So it's much nicer now. Anyway, those are some of the new features we added in 1.2. There's a few smaller details and bug fixes that I didn't mention, but you can read those in the change log. And again, if you're interested, there's a download link below. Okay, bye.